All right, guys, welcome to this page of the notes. What we just did is we just looked at the triangle proportionality theorem, and now we want to look at the converse of the triangle proportionality theorem. Let me quickly remind you what we mean by converse. All the way back in chapter one, when we were looking at how you write a statement, we said this, if I make a statement like this, the statement is if P then Q, right? And the way that this works, right, is I have a hypothesis and a conclusion, right? If it's raining outside, then I will take my umbrella, right? What a converse statement does is it switches them. I take the hypothesis and the conclusion and they switch places. So what we get then is if Q, then P, right? So my statement is if it's raining outside, then I will take an umbrella. The converse of that would be if I take an umbrella, then it's raining outside, right? So here we go. The triangle proportionality theorem was this. If two lines, right, if I have a parallel line running through a triangle, it's parallel to the third side, then it will divide the triangle proportionally. The converse of that is this, right? If a line divides the sides of a triangle proportionally, then the two lines have to be parallel, right? Do you see how the hypothesis and the conclusion has switched places? In the previous page, you knew the lines were parallel, and then we were able to say that the sides were split, split proportionally. In this theorem, we're saying if the sides of the triangle are split proportionally, then the two lines must be parallel, right? So it's the exact same picture we had on the previous page. I've got, right, a line running through my triangle. What I'm saying is if we know the sides are proportionally split, then you can say, hey, those guys have to be parallel, which is exactly the statement they're making right here. EF is parallel to BC. Let's go ahead and take a look at how this works. What I've got for you here is just a little quick question to check and see if you get what's going on here with this theorem. A student makes the statement, makes the statement that UV, here is UV right here in red, that guy, UV, makes the statement that UV must be parallel to ST. Let me put ST in green. And the student is saying, hey, those guys are parallel. Do you agree and explain why or why not? Well, I take a look at the diagram here and here's what I notice. Please notice that RU and US are congruent. They're the same. How do I know? Because I've got those little congruent symbols in there. So I know that RU is congruent to US. Okay. Well, please notice the exact same thing is on the other side. Thanks to the congruent symbols, I know that RV is congruent to VT. RV is congruent to VT. Okay, well what does this mean? Well what it means is because the line UV divides, see I'm, I apologize for squeezing, divides the sides proportionally Right? So because UV does divide the sides proportionally, how do I know that they're proportional? They're congruent to each other, right? They're, they both have the exact same measure. They're not just some random numbers. They, they have the exact same measure. They are proportional. So because UV divides the sides proportionally, the converse of the triangle proportionality theorem would say, yes, UV is parallel. To ST. Right? So that's it. That's how this theorem is going to work 
if you know that the sides are divided proportionally, then you can say that those lines are parallel. Let me show you how this is going to work in a couple of example problems that I've got for you guys right here. So all I'm asking you to do is verify. Prove. Make sure that this is true. I want you to verify that the line segments are parallel. Please verify that MN and KL are parallel. Well, here they are right here. There's MN and there's KL. Are they parallel? Well, in order to show that they're parallel, thanks to the converse of the triangle proportionality theorem, if I can show that the sides are divided proportionally, then I know that they are. So let's write our proportion. Uh, JM over MK has to be equal to JN over NL. Well, let's find out if that's true. JM, 42 over 21 divided by 30 over 15. 42 divided by 21 is 2. 30 divided by 15 is 2. Oh, awesome, look at that. That is a true statement. 2 is equal to 2. That means that the sides are divided proportionally and we know that MN is parallel to KL and boom, you just got verified. Let's try another one. I want you to verify MN is parallel to KL. Well, let's find our lines. MN, wait, not MN. I apologize, typo. All right, so here we go. I want you to show that DE is parallel to AB. That's going to be correct. Sorry, I apologize about that typo. And actually, I have another typo. AC is equal to 36 and BC is equal to 27. I apologize. That is also information that we're going to need to solve this problem. So first, I got my lines wrong. Sorry about that. Um, I kept the same ones from up above, but they're different. There's DE, there's AB, and then, right, I, this is some information that you're going to need. Okay, so here we go. Let's jump into this. In order to set the triangle proportionality, right, I need to know the length of AD. I don't give you AD. I give you AC. So how do you find AD? Actually, that's not too hard. I know that AD is going to be equal to AC minus DC. Right? AD is going to be AC, the whole thing, minus the little bit that I already know. So plug and chug. AD is going to be equal to 36 minus 20 which means AD is equal to 16. Plug it in. Awesome. Um, ooh, we got to do it again. Look, BE. I didn't give you BE, but I did tell you BC. Okay, fine. We do it again. BC. Uh, no, sorry. Sorry, not BC. BE. That's the one I'm looking for. I gave you BC. I want BE. So BE is equal to BC minus EC. So BE is going to be 27 minus 15, which means BE, um, don't fat finger something on your calculator, you should get a 12. That's what I get, I get 12. All right, now I have all of the numbers I need, set up the proportion. Let's see if we can verify this. All right, so it's got to be C, D. Again, please be very, very careful. Don't do the A, right? You need the vertex that both triangles have in common. That's C. So it'll be C, D is proportional to D, A. Oh, oh, oh. I forgot to change my marker color. D, A. That has to be equal to C, E, which will be proportional to E, B. Okay, let's go ahead and plug in what we know. CD, that's 20. DA, 
16, CE 15, EB 12. All right, evenly divisible? No, no, they're not evenly divisible, but that's okay. You could either simplify and you'll get the exact same fraction, or if you prefer, throw them into your calculator. 20 divided by 16 is 1.25. 15 divided by 12 is 1.25. That's exactly what I was looking for. They are equal to each other, which means check. And then because of the converse of the triangle proportionality theorem, I know DE is parallel to AB. And once again, just like that, got verified. So guys, what we're doing here is again, we're taking some of the stuff we learned from a previous chapter, a previous section, on similar triangles and writing proportions between those similar triangles and using now those proportions to either help us prove something or solve for some other unknown. I had a great time taking a look at the triangle proportionality theorems with you. I'll see you guys next time.